Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now if you're in the market for a budget Motorola handset, the two phones that I'm going to compare today, the Motorola G8 Power and the Motorola G30, are pretty good options for you to consider. Now I'm just going to go through the specs, see any similarities, check out any differences and see which one might be better for you. So looking at these phones side by side, you can see they sport slightly different designs when it comes to the display. So on the left here, we've got the Motorola G8 Power, which has a 6.4 inch Full HD plus LCD display with a 1080p resolution. This is good for around 400 pixels per inch. And then up in the top left hand corner, you have your punch hole selfie camera, which is a 16 megapixel f2.0 lens. And on the right, on the Moto G30, it is a slightly larger 6.5 inch display but this is just a HD display, so 720p resolution display, which has a resolution of around 269 ppi. So it's a much less sharp display than the G8 Power. And then up in the top, in this kind of dewdrop notch design, you have your 13 megapixel selfie camera. Both selfie cameras capable of shooting 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Also, the Motorola G30 has a 90 hertz refresh rate, whereas the Motorola G8 Power is just stuck with a 60 hertz display. But for me personally, I would rather choose a full HD display with a 60 hertz refresh rate than a 720p display with a 90 hertz refresh rate. Both displays are absolutely fine with nice color and good detail. Obviously there is more detail on the full HD display of the G8 Power, but the 720p on the G30 is not too bad. If we flip both phones around, you can see that both phones have a quad camera setup but they are arranged slightly different. So on the left hand side on the G8 Power, you have a 16 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide, an eight megapixel telephoto lens, and then a two megapixel macro camera. And then on the Motorola G30, you have a 64 megapixel quad pixel sensor, which is backed up by an eight megapixel ultra wide, a two megapixel macro camera and a two megapixel depth sensor. So personally, I think the G8 Power has the advantage here as it has a eight megapixel telephoto lens instead of a two megapixel depth sensor. But we all know that, you know, dual camera setups are absolutely fine at capturing depth. They don't actually need a depth sensor. But one thing to bear in mind is when using portrait mode on the G8 Power, that does actually switch to the telephoto lens rather than shooting off the main sensor. So you will have to back up a little bit in order to get your subject in the frame. In the center of both phones, you've got your fingerprint sensor, both of which are very responsive. And then up there, you've got the flash on the G8 Power and then on the G30, it's built into the camera module there. In terms of the materials used, both phones have got plastic backs. On the Motorola G30, it's a unibody plastic design. So the plastic actually wraps around the side of the phone in one piece. But then on the G8 Power, it's a plastic back, but then you've actually got an aluminium frame which wraps around the phone as well, which is a nice touch. On the right hand side of the phones, on the G8 Power, you've got your power button and your volume controls. And on the G30, you've got your power button, volume control, and your dedicated Google Assistant button up the top. And then on the left hand side, you've got your SIM tray, both of which have micro SD card support. On the top of both phones, you've got a headphone jack and a microphone. And then on the bottom of both, you've got a speaker grill, USB-C charging port, and another microphone. Now the benefit of the Motorola G8 Power is you've actually got another speaker built into the earpiece. So there are stereo speaker setups on the Motorola G8 Power. The speaker quality on both phones is very good, but for either I wouldn't turn the volume up too loud because they do start to sound a little bit tinny as the volume goes up. In terms of battery, you've got a 5000 milliamp cell in both. So both of them should last you all day with no problems. And then you've got up to 20 watt fast charging on the G30 and 18 watt fast charging on the Moto G8 Power. So neither have the fastest charging in the world of 33 and 65 watt charging, but you know, if, if you're running a bit low and you wanna plug your phone in for a little bit, it should give you a decent amount of charge. Both phones get from around naught to 30% in around half an hour. So yeah, it's, it's, it's slow in terms of the fact you've got some phones that will do naught to 50 or 60% in half an hour, but 30% isn't too bad. In terms of the battery life on both of these phones, 
I found that it's been absolutely brilliant on both. Frequently on the G8 Power when I was using that, I was finishing my work day on around 60 to 70%. Although not with a huge amount of screen on time, it was only a couple of hours, you will probably find that you will get five to six hours of screen on time on both of these phones. In terms of the RAM and the storage, both of these phones have four gigabytes of RAM, but you've got 128 gigs of storage on the Moto G30, but the Motorola G8 Power has a 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and that is the only configuration with that one. In terms of the processors, they are very, very similar. On the Motorola G8 Power, you have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665, which is a couple of years old now, but to be honest, it's still perfectly capable of running day-to-day -day activities. And then on the Motorola G30, you have a slightly newer Snapdragon 662, but in benchmarks, they do perform very similar. So as you can see on the Geekbench test, they are basically identical. I mean, a single core, one point separating these two, so there's basically no difference whatsoever. You won't have any issues swiping through your interface on either phone, especially, of course, if you use the 90 hertz refresh rate on the G30, which you can switch to auto, so AI decides whether it needs to be 90 hertz or whether it will switch down to 60 hertz, or you can, of course, choose 60 hertz if you want to prolong your battery life. I just keep it on 90, because even with the 90 hertz display on, the battery life is still really, really good. Now talking back about the cameras quickly, in terms of the photo quality, both the primary cameras are pretty comparable. They both take nice, sharp photos with good color. The one advantage that the G30 has over the G8 power, that there is night vision mode on the G30, which unfortunately you don't get that on the G8 power. So if you shoot in any photos in the dark, in the streets at night or something like that, you will probably get more detailed photos from the G30. And then if we flip quickly over to the front facing camera on both, you get a 16 megapixel, like I said before, 16 megapixel sensor on the G8 power, and then you get a 13 megapixel sensor on the G30, both of which can shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second. I do find that the G8 Power selfie camera is a lot better in taking stills than the G30. I find that the G30, there's just not enough detail. Pictures do look very grainy. I would have thought out of a 13 megapixel sensor that the photos would have been a bit better, but unfortunately not. So that's my quick comparison between the Motorola G8 Power and the Moto G30. Both of these phones are absolutely fine for daily running. If you're just someone that does a bit of social media, a bit of web browsing, uses the camera a little bit, messaging and all that sort of stuff, you won't have any problems with either of these phones. They both handle a bit of gaming as well, as long as you don't put the detail settings too high. But if you want one with a bit more of a versatile and better camera, personally, I would go with the slightly older G8 Power, especially as it's got that eight megapixel telephoto lens rather than the two two megapixel depth and macro cameras on the G30. But that's not to say that the G30 is a rubbish phone. It's not, I've used it plenty of times over the last couple of months as my daily phone, and I've not had any major issues with it. The 720p display is fine, it's perfectly usable, but I do notice when going back to a 1080p display how much I do miss a 1080p display. So thank you for watching. I hope this helps if you're considering getting a budget Motorola phone. If you did enjoy what you see, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one.